that we want to have children and offer them as soldiers defending Islam, loving Islam. Not soldiers or not people having intentions. Well, I want my son to be the best doctor or the best philosopher or the best scientist or the best bookmaker or the best librarian. Yes, it's good to be like that, but we want our children to be soldiers. Meaning soldiers here loving Islam, practicing Islam, and there'll be peace and security on earth. Isn't this what Islam teaches us? So what we should do is place them in an atmosphere that will teach them what Islam is. Teach them, strengthen them by loving, by making them love the companions, the courageous warriors. Put in their soft, tender heart the zeal of jihad and the love of shahada, the love of martyrdom. Place in their hearts at the young age. Uh, the love of this, Muhammad said to us all, teach him this, that there was nothing more beloved to me than wanting to die as a mujahid and then being resurrected once again and die again and be resurrected and die again and be resurrected and die again. This is the most beloved thing to him. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, let us reflect, let us ponder and contemplate upon this. Number two. Standing guard in the way of Allah Ta'ala as Muslim the Hijaj narrated on the authority of Salman that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever stands guard for a day and a night on the battlefield in the way of the Almighty Lord is better than praying the nights and fasting the days for an entire month and if he dies while doing this his deeds will continue to accumulate until the day of resurrection and He'll be saved from the punishment of the grave. Likewise, number three, dying because of an abdominal disease, as Abu Isa at Tirmizi narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Yasir, that he was sitting with a man called Sulaiman ibn Sard and another man called Khalid ibn Arfata. Khalid ibn Arfata. One of them said that. A man died because of a disease in his uh, stomach. The other said, did not Muhammad وسلم, say that whoever dies because of an abdominal disease will be prevented from the punishment of the grave? He said, yes, you have spoken the truth. Likewise, number four, reciting Surah Tabarak, Mulk, as Al-Hakim now rated the Sahih chain on the authority of Abdullah Mas'ud, that he said, Surah Tabarak will prevent you, protect you from the punishment of the grave. Likewise, dying on Friday, the day or night of Friday, as mentioned by Abu Isa Tirmizi on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr, that whoever dies on the day or night of Friday will be prevented from the punishment of the grave. And we all know the virtues of Friday. They are among the most excellent of our days. They are our Eid. It's our Eid Friday. Just like the Jews have what? The Sabbath on Saturday. And the Christians have their Sunday Masses. It's their Eid for them which uh, to a lot of Orthodox uh, Christians and Jews, working on Saturday is an absolute sin for them. And the Christians on Sunday, a lot of them consider it sin to work on that day. But for Muslims, you are allowed to work on that day. It is acceptable, it's allowable. But you should try uh, to take the whole day off if you are able to. Do not work on that day. It's a day for us as Eid. And the virtues of it, as mentioned, Adam was created on that day. He died on that day. The trumpet will be blown on that day and the shout will be made on that day. On that day what you should do, you attend Fajr in congregation, go to the mosque, go to a place where they pray in Jama'ah, pray Fajr with the congregation. After that attend the lesson if there's a lesson. You know, start the day off with, with, with worship. Then go home, get the clippers out, <clears throat> clip your finger and toenails, pluck or shave the pubic hair or the underarm hair, brush your teeth, go have a shower, just a shower where it's enough water to clean yourself. Don't waste all the hot water, don't waste all the water for the next person, leave some water for others as well. You know, people like to stay in the shower for hours on <coughs> and they think that their voice is nice in the shower and start sitting coming. <laughs> so avoid <coughs> such things because you are not allowed to talk while you are showering anyway. Uh, after your shower, dress up nicely, put your best clothes on, perfume yourself with beautiful tib or misk, 
make sure it's more nice, and go in the first hour to the mosque. Not in the second hour, or third, or fourth, or fifth. In the first hour if you're able to. Why? Because it is as though you have offered a a camel. In the second hour, an elephant, a cow. In the third hour, a zebra, a what? A horned ram. In the fourth hour, a rooster, a chicken. And in the fifth hour, it is like, what kind of an egg is it? A duck's egg? A bird's egg? An emu's egg? It's a big egg, isn't it? It's like you have offered a chicken's egg. But at least try, if you don't want to go or have this blessing, get to the mosque, go to the mosque before the imam stands on his mimbar. Why? Because the angels will continue registering their na your name, uh, standing on the door, the entrance, taking the names of every single Muslim that enters the mosque or the place of Friday congregation. And when the Imam sits on the pulpit, on the mimbar, the angels will close their books, say, you will miss a lot of blessing, a great blessing here. The angels close their books and enter likewise, and they'll sit next to the Imam and listen to the khutbah. <coughs> So try to make it at least before the Imam sits on his pulpit or his pulpit or his mimbar. And then when you go to the mosque, what do you do? As soon as you enter the mosque, you pray two rak'at. You do not sit down even if the khutbah is in progress. Pray two rak'at, sit down quietly. Don't be fidgety. Don't play off your hair, your beard, your nose, your ears, your money, your telephone. Just be quiet and silent. Listen to the Imam. Even if someone says, Alhamdulillah, after sneezing, do not say Alhamdulillah. Do not give any advice. You are not allowed to say a word on that day unless you speak to the Imam. Anyone that says anything to other than the Imam, your prayer on that day, your reward will become invalidated, as the hadith mentions. Invalidated. Even if you say Alhamdulillah to a sneezer, not a single word must be spoken. Not a single move must be made unless you need to make it. Then you just sit down and relax and listen to the khatib. It is not acceptable for a person, if he's a uh, runner of an organization, to make or send the prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ after the Adhan on that day. It is not allowed for a person to sit down and put the Quran before or after Jum'ah. Likewise, it's not allowed to put an ashid as some mosques do as well. This is all innovations and not anything to do with the Islamic feature for Friday prayer. Now we'll look at the person who loves to wish for death. A question came to me this morning and asked, which was, are you allowed to wish for death? Now, it's an important question. You know, many people out there, when they fall into poverty, distress, anxiety, you can say, pressure. They wish for death. I wish I was dead. Islamically, you are not allowed to wish for death. Unacceptable. As the hadith mentions, do not wish for death. It is better for you to say, Oh Allah, grant me life for as long as life is better for me and cause me to die when death, when death is better for me. And this was mentioned in a narration when Muhammad Sallallahu entered the room of Abu Abbas, his uncle, and he saw him wishing for death. He said, oh uncle, do not wish for death. Maybe you might do good deeds and your deeds will accumulate, they will increase and that is better for you. And maybe a person does bad deeds and his death is delayed. Thus he seeks forgiveness and that is better for him. So Islamically we are not allowed brothers and sisters to wish for death. If you feel uneasy, uncomfortable, you're sick of this life, you say, oh Allah, grant, grant me life if life is better for me. Oh Allah, grant me death is death if death is better for me. This is the way of a Muslim and this is the way that we have been taught to say in our dua when we feel in a state of stress and so forth. If you are present at the time of a dying person, your brother and sister is at the verge of death, what should you do? The first thing you should do is encourage the dying person to say what? The word of sincerity, the word of salvation. La ilaha illallah, the word of truth and nothing but the truth. 
reminding him thereof until he says it. 